It isn't often that I can start a Thunderbolt show with a whimsical question, which is, why are we so intent on reverse engineering spacecraft that have crashed on our planet? Seriously, thousands of people report UFO sightings each year. Even the Pentagon receives hundreds of reports each year from military personnel. Finally, after decades of dithering over the issue, the National Aeronautical and Space Administration, NASA, has officially adopted the position that some UFO phenomena are real, meaning that they are not just imaginations or hallucinations, nor are they normally occurring activities or objects that are misperceived, misconstrued, or misidentified. Some of them are something else. The EU community would say that some, probably most, of these mysterious sightings are due to naturally occurring plasma activity. The realm of plasma forms and formations is undoubtedly larger and more complex than mainstream science realizes at this point. It hasn't been that long since high atmospheric electric plasma activity forms, such as red sprites, blue jets, and elves, have been documented photographically. Beginning in the final decade of the last century and early 2000s, blue jets, blue starters, and gigantic jets have been somewhat adequately studied and identified as high-altitude upward-traveling electric discharge, or a form of lightning. Along with the jets, different types of sprites, elves, trolls, pixies, ghosts, and gnomes have been identified and cataloged. Also, most everyone, including maybe even some astrophysicists, astronomers, and cosmologists would be unaware of a special class of plasma phenomena called Peratt instabilities. Dr. Anthony Pratt, when he was doing classified research at Los Alamos National Laboratories and later as co-director of that organization, identified some very specific plasma forms that happen in a sequence as a high energy discharge breakdown, and these were named after him. We never see these forms in the sky nowadays, but the ancient people living at the end of the Golden Age certainly did. We can know this with a high degree of certainty because they collectively spent thousands of hours in shielded locations, laboriously yet faithfully carving these unique forms into the thousands of petrographs that we find around the Northern Hemisphere. The interplanetary discharge to the southern hemisphere, netherworld of Earth, gave off ionizing synchrotron radiation, which alters the integrity of the human genome and can be lethal at some level. If this sounds unfamiliar, even preposterous, it is because establishment academic scientism is in denial of what really happened in the ancient times and have constructed a modern mythology that has infected every discipline except those that are constantly and ineluctably tested by reality, like chemistry and engineering. Other types of what the EU community calls plasma activity are St. Elmo's fire and ball lightning. Here are some recent sightings. In June 2021, a passenger observed and filmed a blocky cylindrical object that shapeshifted as it bobbed around the commercial flight. The ethereal object was glowing as it changed shape. At some point, it also changed its volume before it stretched out and took the form roughly of an angel. This was filmed by a passenger. Earlier in 2021, a swarm of UFOs surrounded a Navy ship for hours, which was not just witnessed by Navy personnel, but also confirmed by the radar record. On July 15, 2019, 
the crew of the SS Omaha observed a number of objects surrounding the ship with at least one of the spheroidal objects estimated to be at least six feet in diameter. It was well illuminated. Over a period of eight days, several of the ships also operating outside of their base in San Diego observed similar phenomena. Astronaut Leroy Chiao, commander of the International Space Station for six months in 2005, witnessed a formation of lights, quote, like an upside-down Nike swoosh. These are some examples of many documented encounters in the last few years, and the USA population is largely aware that military officials in the Pentagon have at last pronounced them real, meaning that they are not imaginary or the result of hallucinations. These sightings and experiences are really nothing new, and variations have been noted and reported down through much of history. So, what is the most reasonable explanation? The EU paradigm would posit that the phenomena in this category are not alien craft, whether extraterrestrial or not. UFOs being unidentified flying objects and UAPs being unidentified aerial phenomena, these come in the form of at least two distinct types. One, high-altitude formations of lights moving in the sky, sometimes at speeds that greatly exceed those of earthly aircraft, and sometimes doing steep-angle course changes at high speeds that would introduce stress forces that would exceed the structural capacity of any known materials. And two, slowly moving, more substantial and metallic cigar, bell, or saucer-shaped structures, some of which have interacted with humans and are ground and air vehicles. It is the latter that is probably most related to the various sightings and encounters with objects that are considered to be spaceships of extraterrestrial origin. Let's deal with the issue of shape. It is noteworthy that spheroidal shapes can be distorted to form a bell shape or flattened to form a saucer or discus shape and elongated to form cigar or cylindrical shapes. It is crucial to understand that course changes involve acceleration-deceleration forces acting on the macro level of certain aircraft surfaces. And these get transferred to the entire craft by its structural integrity. In pronounced contrast, in plasma, the electric force acts directly on each and every particle. And thus, there is no resulting structural stress from acute deceleration or acceleration. Over the years, the accounts note that when these UFOs pass over cars, the vehicles tend to stall out. And when these UFOs pass over individuals, they lose consciousness or hallucinate. These are precisely the results that you would expect from an electric field induced by significantly sized plasma objects. And just like with ball lightning, these forms sometimes suddenly disappear into thin air. We can easily understand that ball lightning gradually loses its charge and then pops like a bubble. And we can easily understand that probably some UFOs are undergoing the same discharge end result. One last account of plasma phenomena. On a military flight over Luzon, Philippines, in-flight tech Mike Harrington describes the ball lightning that entered the plane from an intense lightning strike. Quote, when the lightning cooked the hydraulic fluid into a powder inside the number one and number two hydraulic lines, a plasmoid appeared above the floor decking. It was heliluminescent, whitish yellow, and about two feet in diameter. The weirdest thing was that it appeared to affect my senses or my brain. I was standing by the main cabin door. That ball of energy floated so seemingly slowly past me 
And it was like every neuron in my brain was screaming to me that if that thing touched me, I would be instantly dead. Anyway, once it got to the Sonoboy chutes, it must have grounded out to the belly of the plane and discharged off one of our VHF navigation radio antennas. The moment that that ball went whoosh out of the plane, all noise instantly returned and the sensation of time returned to normal. That was back in the 80s. I'm glad that after all these years, I've been able to get the science of what happened that night into my head. In the 1990s, Australian archaeologist Peter Mungo Jupp attended an EU event and was my guest for a weekend in Portland, Oregon. We talked about the possibility of many UFO appearances being forms of plasma phenomena. Peter continued to meticulously research the subject, especially from that associated with volcanic activity. In May 2021, he released the very helpful and worthy Thunderbolt show, UFO or Plasmoid. Down through the centuries, the hallucinated alien life forms have morphed from gods, angels, and demons to fairies, sprites, and nymphs to little blue or green humanoids, to more insect-like creatures called greys, and now to who knows what. Further reason to have a skeptical stance is that now some of the whistleblowers are claiming aspects that violate axiomatic metaphysical principles. An example is that one craft supposedly, quote, distorted space-time by being, quote, bigger on the inside. The historical perspective indicates that the prevailing paradigm of scientific or establishment reality inevitably proves to be seriously misguided, and the EU proponents understand that it will be no different this time. Maybe someday we can be enough committed to being intellectually responsible so that we can better sort out the truth and develop a worldview that won't be so transient and so at odds with both physical and spiritual reality. A final word so that there is no misunderstanding. Until I can see with my own non-lion eyes and touch with my own experienced fingers, I probably will doubt the existence of alien life forms piloting interplanetary, interstellar, or intergalactic spacecraft and visiting this sorry planet. But it would be arrogant and preposterous for me to be adamant that there can be no such thing. Make no mistake, even though I demand for myself to be intellectually responsible and have vigorously pursued learning, I know that I am profoundly ignorant in terms of the grand reality of the universe. But aren't we all? <laughs>